Good morning. How's everybody? Good. Um, I'm Elaine, and in my group is Mike and Hank. Our topic is solving problems. Okay. Tanya hands you a testing report and asks you to make 13 copies for the meeting in 10 minutes. While making the copies, to, to print out, find, out, find them, the copper starts to make a funny noise. Find a funny beeping noise. You look at the status message, and it says, error paper, Janet J1. What should you all do? How many things it's A, leave, and bring time the two copies of the testing report? How about B, go to a copier on the other side of the building? <laughs> oh, Lord. Or C, create a sign that says, out of order, and tape it to the machine. Or D, open tray one and clear the jam paper. Probably would C. And that's the correct answer. <laughs> that's the best solution. Others, I mean, the first three are, are possible solutions as well, but the best one is D. Okay. These are the five steps to solving problems. First, we, what, um, we identified a problem, what the problem is, and then we gathered information, um, what information we need um, to understand the problem. And next, list the possible solutions. What would be the best solution, I mean, what would be the best result for each solution? Um, let's weigh in out like, the pros and cons of the solution. And then, finally, which solution is the best um, solution? best result. The first three talks about examines and defines problem. And, la and the last two chooses the best solution. And now here's Hank to cover a little more detail. Okay, first we're going to identify the problem. You work at the cable company. An angry customer calls and complains that she is being charged a premium cable plan instead of the basic cable plan that she requested. This is the third time that she has received a bill with the same error and she wants to cancel her cable service. After reviewing her contract, you find that she did select the premium cable plan and not the basic cable plan that she is claiming. Okay, so what's the problem? Well, the problem is she, can't, she says there's an error in her bill. That is the problem. All right, now we're gonna gather information. Who, who has the problem? What? What is the problem? When? When did the problem occur? Where? Where did the problem occur? Why? Why did the problem occur? And how? How are we going to fix it? Okay. Now you know there's possible solutions. Well, here's one possible solution. I apologize for the error and promise her it will never happen again. Is that a possible solution, right? Or how about Apologize for the error and offer her one free month of cable if she stays. Or point out to her that the error was hers and there was nothing wrong with the bill. And finally, point out to her that the error was hers and offer the cable to the basic cable plan. Okay, now we've got four possible solutions now. Now let's go a little step further and let's look at the possible consequences of each of those solutions. Well, if I say, apologize for the error, I promise her it will never happen again, what do you think is going to happen? It will happen again. Well, it's probably going to happen again, but what's, what's going to happen? We're going to lose the customer, aren't we? Mm -hmm. How about if I apologize for the error, not for her one, three months of cable if she stays? Do you think I might have a chance of keeping her if I offer that? One month. Oh, yeah, at least one month. <laughs> or how about if I point out to her that the error was hers and there was nothing wrong with the bill? <laughs> I'm definitely going to lose the customer then, aren't I? Okay. And I point out to her that the error was hers and offered to change it back to the basic plan. Well, probably going to lose the customer there too. So what do you think the best possible answer is? Second. Exactly. Decided to apologize for the error and offer her one free month of cable if she stays. It's pretty easy, right? All right, now Mike's going to talk to you about decision making. Question is, how do you make a decision? Remember back when we did the, uh, the personality traits, uh, we did all the questionnaires, and we did, went through and we decided we're either analytical or we're drivers or 
expresses. Well, this is along the same thing. Uh, it goes through and goes, tells folks what kind of, how, how they make the decisions, how different individuals make the decisions. A practical person, more, more, more practical, is, is more realistic about it. He's, he's goal-oriented, he's, uh, he's fact-based, fact his, his, his decisions are based on the facts, and only on the facts. Very practical person. And, and instinctive, uh, that's, that's his emotions that guide him. He goes through it and, and his feelings get, get, get in the, tend to get in the way. It's more about uh, how you feel and then whether the outcome. Doesn't, uh, doesn't tend not to think it all the way through to, to the consequences. And then changes your mind, changes the decision as you go. Uh, the cooperative uh, process likes to, likes to ask a lot of questions. Likes to get everybody involved. Likes to have all people and all opinions uh, involved all at the same time. And it prefers to work in teams. The examining person is kind of more like the analytical person. He goes into very deep in the depth on all the decisions. Works it all the way through the decision. Uh, what's the possible solution? What, is, what are the possible consequences? What are the ramifications of each consequence? Very, a very long process. It's probably a lot of us tend to, be, tend to go through. And he looks for, also, now he's made a decision, now he's looking for alternatives. Is there a better one? Is there something else that we haven't thought of? Go beyond that. Now, let's think about it for a minute. What are, what are solutions that we, we might end up making at Prudential here in the next six months, six, three, six years, 20 years, however long we end up being here? Some will be easy, some will be hard. Some of them will, have, will affect a lot of people, some of them will, may affect nobody. It may just affect a process. Uh, Poor, you know, a lot of folks, a lot of poor decisions are made uh, because folks aren't thinking it through, aren't thinking of the consequences. We don't want to be the guy that, that thinks, man, I should have done it different. I wish I had done this instead of what I did. Now, in closing, we're going to go back a little bit about the five steps. We talked about the decision-making process. We talked about uh, thinking about our future. And now Elaine's got a handout for us to do.